Number 66. Suppose you have a 9 volt battery, a 2 microfarad capacitor, and a 7.4 microfarad capacitor. Letter A. Find the charge and energy stored if the capacitors are connected to the battery in series. Alright, so a little picture might help. So you probably have seen the problems that we've done where capacitors were in series. So let's just draw a simple picture. Okay, here's capacitor 1, and then here's capacitor 2. Okay, these are connected in series. Assume that the flow is going to be from the left to the right. Doesn't really matter. You know, eventually then these two items, this point here and this point here should be connected to a battery of sorts. So, you know, to show that I could kind of bring it down like this, maybe. It doesn't really matter. But here, well, I didn't like that line. Probably won't like that one either, but yeah, that's good enough. This down here then will represent the battery, okay? that I'm drawing, and this battery has terminals on it, a positive, you know, and a negative, okay? But that's the idea. And these two now capacitors, they're connected to the battery. The battery, by the way, is nine volts, all right? So it has a voltage of nine. So this is the voltage that then is applied to the capacitors, okay? And we know that it doesn't matter which one we write first. We know that we're dealing with a two microfarad, but you know, since we're going to do calculations here, since we're not just dealing with adding capacitors up and all this, um, you know, we're not just fine. We have to find equivalent capacitance. Um, but after that, we're going to be doing calculations using formulas. We know we're going to need this in farads. So I'm just going to do the conversion right away. So it's 2 times 10 to the minus 6 farads for the first one. And then it's 7.4 times 10 to the minus 6 farads for the second. The reason being is because they both gave it to me in the problem in microfarad. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. These are the capacitance value for each of them. Okay, so I'll call one capacitance one, and the other one capacitance two. So now in order to do this problem, okay, what we have to do is we have to first break down this little circuit of sorts into a simple circuit, meaning I have to take these capacitors that are in series and try to break it down into a single capacitance. Okay, how do we do that? Well, we've spent a bunch of, we, we've done a bunch of problems earlier in the chapter. So take a look at those. I forgot the numbers, but, um, you know, they're, they're in the prior section. It was 60, 61, I don't know, somewhere around there. All right. So I'm going to kind of run through that idea. We know these two capacitors here are connected in parallel, excuse me, in series. Um, so what is the series capacitance formula to add them together? Well, it turns out to be that it's one over the capacitance in series is going to be equal to 1 over the first capacitor plus 1 over the second capacitor, you know, plus 1 over the third if you had 3, etc., etc. And now all I have to do is plug it in. So it's going to be 1 over C1, which is 2 times 10 to the minus 6, plus then 1 over C2, which is 7.4 times 10 to the minus 6. So the inverse, basically, of the capacitance in series will be equal to 1 divided by 2 times 10 to the minus 6 plus 1 divided by 7.4 times 10 to the minus 6. So this works out to be now 6.35 times 10 to the 3, 4, 5. Now remember, this is the reciprocal. So essentially, I have to do a cross multiplication, bring this out of the denominator, and on up into the numerator on a cross, and do the opposite for this. Bring it on down. And look, you just solved it. Okay, so now plug that into the calculator. So take 1 and divide it by the answer you just got the 6.35 times 10 to the fifth, and we realize that we come up with a value of 1.57 times 10 to the minus sixth is equal to the total capacitance that is in series, okay? Now, if you notice also that this value is less than any of the two capacitors, any uh, uh, the capacitance of either of the two capacitors, that's how I know I'm on the right track. I probably didn't make a mistake in the math, okay? That should be the case. Now, let's get rid of this work, and what I'm going to read, what I'm going to draw now is a new quote unquote circuit, okay, with only one capacitor in it. So now the circuit's going to look like this. Okay, here's the battery. I got my terminals. And now the capacitance here is going to be 1.57 times 10 to the minus sixth. Let me just get rid of that dot. 10 to the minus sixth. Um, and remember, this is in farads. I didn't put the unit here, but it's farads. Okay. Now, 
the voltage applied to this single capacitor now is 9 volts. Okay, and just to drive the point home, this picture is equivalent to this picture. Okay, this will act in the same way that this is acting. All right, the charge stored on this single capacitor would be the same as the charge stored across both of these. Okay, now, how do we find now? Let's see, uh, it doesn't matter which one we may, might start with. Why don't we find the energy stored first? Okay, find the you find the charge in the energy, energy stored if the capacitors are connected to the battery in series. Okay, I don't know if we have to find it over each capacitor or in total. I, I don't, it's a little unclear. So let's just find it in total, I guess. Um, so let's grab one of the, <clears throat> excuse me, let's grab one of the formulas. So we know that the energy inside of a capacitor is going to be equal to, or the energy stored, I should say, in a capacitor is going to be equal to um, CV squared all over 2. That's one of the formulas down here on the bottom right. So to find that, we just have to now simply plug in the values. So the capacitance is going to be 1.57 times 10 to the minus 6 times in the voltage, which is 1. Uh, excuse me, which is 9 squared divided then by 2. So the energy stored now in this system is going to be, let's see, so that value multiplied by 9 squared, 9 squared divided by 2. So it's going to be 6.38, I guess. 6.38 times 10 to the minus 5. And that's in terms of joules. So this is the energy stored in this system if they were in parallel, uh, if they were in series. Okay. And now let's find the charge. So the charge um, would be, again, we can use now this formula where it tells us that the capacitance is going to be equal to the charge stored across that capacitor divided by the voltage. To find Q, simply do a little cross multiplication, C times V. And now all we got to do is plug it in. Essentially, it's basically, look, if you notice, it's essentially the numerator of the energy stored in the capacitor without the V squared. Okay, it's just V. So the capacitance here was 1.57 times 10 to the minus 6 multiplied by the voltage of 9. And let's see. So here getting a little squished. Let's just move this on up if I can. Give me one second. So Q will then equal, uh, let's get that exact value from before, that value multiplied by that 9. So I guess it works out to be 1.42 or so. 1.42 times 10 to the minus fifth. Okay, and that is in coulombs. So if we have a um, series arrangement. This is the energy. Okay, that's stored. And this, my friends, is the charge that is stored. Okay, that was for a series arrangement. Now, let's get rid of all this beautiful work and let's now do parallel. Okay, so I'm actually going to keep the pictures, though. And I'm just going to change one of them. How's your day going today? I hope you're having a good one. I am having a fantastic day myself. Any day I get to do capacitance problems is a great day. I'm not that nerdy. Okay, so now this would be an example of a, well, I'll try to do my best here. This is going to be now an example of a parallel uh, system. And I already realize I got to adjust this a little bit. Let's bring that back down to here. And now let's do this. Another capacitor. What am I doing? I have no idea. And there we go. Okay. So now this arrangement of capacitors, again, one of them will be the... 2 times 10 to the minus 6. The other one will be the 7.4 times 10 to the minus 6 farads. Okay. But now, and uh, let me get rid of this. I'm not sure what that's doing. Um, now, though, this arrangement of capacitors is in parallel. How did I know? Well, remember, I mean, we've done a whole bunch of problems. So check them out, by the way. And, uh, you know, just quickly, I pretend like there's something flowing, you know, from one side of the circuit. Right? You can think about it as charge, or you can think about it as like fluid, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. But my whole idea is that in order to get to, let's say, this capacitor, it does not have to flow through this one. 
right? The flow, so to speak, can go through both of them simultaneously. That's parallel. That's a parallel arrangement. Whereas in the other one, if you remember the picture, to get to the second capacitor, it had to pass through. The flow had to go through the first one. Okay, that's how we know the difference. In any case, I know that this is in parallel, and I gotta, again, simplify the circuit, basically I'm down to a simple one with a single capacitance. Okay, I gotta find the equivalent capacitance. If I know they're in parallel, I use my parallel capacitance formula. So the capacitance in parallel, the total capacitance in parallel will be equal to the capacitance one plus capacitance two plus capacitance three, you know, four, five, six, however many, 18,000 if you had, it doesn't matter. So the first capacitor here is gonna be two times 10 to the minus sixth, plus then 7.4 times 10 to the minus sixth. I'm going to reduce the temptation to put, plug this into the calculator, and I'm just gonna say it's 9.4 times 10 to the minus six. It's like magic, right? There it is. Okay. Now, if this is the total capacitance, it would be equivalent. So this basic circuit here, and I realize this thing popped back up on me. Sorry, this thing over here, so let me just erase that. Um, so now I know my equivalent capacitance of this circuit is similar to this with one capacitance, one capacitor that has a value of 9.4 times 10 to the minus six farad. I'm gonna literally do now the exact same calculations, okay? So the energy stored in that system now will be equal to, no different, the capacitance multiplied by the voltage squared all divided by two, the capacitance now is going to be 9.4 times 10 to the minus sixth. The voltage is nine squared all over two. If you notice, the only difference between the calculation here and what we did before is going to be the total capacitance. That's literally it. But if that's different, obviously the values will be different, right? So this is going to be now 9.4, <clears throat> sorry, losing my voice, times 10 to the minus six, multiplied by nine squared, all divided by two, and here we get a value now of about 3.81 or so, times 10 to the minus fourth Farad. Now, if you notice, oh, well, actually that's the energy. I meant to make one note. So that's the energy, that's good. But I meant to make one note over here. In terms of the total capacitance that you find in a parallel arrangement, that should always be larger than any of the two individuals. It's the exact opposite, or three individual ones that you had or four. It's always the exact opposite um, of the, uh, series arrangement, okay, where the series was the total was essentially less than any of the individuals. In parallel, the total will be greater, all right? That's something to keep in mind. Now that I found the energy stored in the capacitor system for a parallel arrangement, which is now this, okay, I can then uh, find the charge. So it's going to be, well, I didn't even need to do that really to find the charge because the formula is the capacitance is gonna be equal to the charge over the voltage Cross multiply again, so it's char uh, <laughs> I had charge in my mind for this, then I had Coulomb, and I'm like, well, no, neither. That's capacitance, okay? So if you get if you get confused with all the letters, I do too, so don't worry. You're in good company, I hope. So here, just simply plug in the capacitance, um, the equivalent capacitance, that is. So this is 9.4 times 10 to the minus 6 multiplied by the voltage, which is 9, and let's see what we get. And while I move this hole up, just to maybe make a little more space. Let's do that. Let's do that. Great. So, charge. The moment we've all been waiting for. The end of the problem. 9.4 times 10 to the minus 6, multiplied by 9. So it's 8.46. 8.46 times 10 to the minus 5th. And that will be in coulombs. And that's the charge stored in a parallel uh, arrangement. Guys, thank you so, so very much. I do hope this helped. Uh, if it did, you know, give us a give us a shout out to your friends. We might be able to help them as well. Subscribe and hit that like button. All right, I appreciate it very, very much. Thank you.